Hello, this is Rafael. Today, we are talking about the five hypotheses of Krashen's theory of second language acquisition. This theory consists of five main hypotheses. Number one, the acquisition learning hypothesis. Number two, the monitor hypothesis. Number three, the input hypothesis. Number four, the effective filter hypothesis. And number five, the natural order hypothesis. The acquisition learning hypothesis. According to Krashen, there are two independent systems of foreign language performance. Number one, the language acquisition, and number two, the language learning. The language acquisition is the product of a subconscious process very similar to the process children undergo when they acquire their first language. It requires meaningful interaction in the target language, that is, natural communication. Here, speakers are concentrated not in the form of their utterances, but in the communicative act. The language learning. It is the product of formal instruction, so it is a conscious process which results in conscious knowledge about the language. For example, knowledge of grammar rules. It is necessary to say that a deductive approach in a teacher-centered setting produces learning, while an inductive approach in a student-centered setting leads to acquisition. The monitor hypothesis. It explains the relationship between acquisition and learning and defines the influence of the latter on the former. According to Krashen, the acquisition system is the utterance initiator, while the learning system performs the role of the monitor or the editor. This monitor acts in a planning, editing and correcting function where three specific conditions are met. The three specific conditions are sufficient time, focus on form, and knowledge of the rules. So, the role of the monitor it is to correct deviations from normal speech and to give speech a more polished appearance. Crushing Russian also identifies language learners with regard to monitor use. He distinguishes those learners that use the monitor all the time over users, those learners who have not learned or who prefer not to use their conscious knowledge on their users, and those learners that use the monitor appropriately, optimal users. Usually extroverts are on their users, while introverts and perfectionists are overusers. Lack of self-confidence is frequently related to the overuse of the monitor. The input hypothesis. It is Krashen's attempt to explain how second language acquisition takes place. According to this hypothesis, the learner improves and progresses along the natural order. When he receives second language input, that is one step beyond his current stage of linguistic competence. Here, we discovered that natural communicative input is the key to designing a syllabus. The affective filter hypothesis. This hypothesis says that a number of affective variables play a facilitative but no causal role in second language acquisition. These variables include motivation, self-confidence, anxiety, and personal traits. Krashen claims that learners with high motivation, self-confidence, a good self-image, a low level of anxiety, and extroversion are better equipped for success in second language acquisition. On the contrary, low motivation, low self-esteem, anxiety, introversion and inhibition can raise the affective filter and form a mental block that impedes language acquisition. So, for acquisition to take place, positive effect is necessary but not sufficient on its own. Natural order hypothesis. 
This hypothesis suggests that the acquisition of grammatical structures follows a natural order, which is predictable. For a given language, some grammatical structures tend to be acquired early while others late. This hypothesis also accounts for students' mistakes and errors. That is, students make mistakes when the structure used has not been completely acquired. However, students can use their learned competence to modify their production. So, the best way to correct a student's mistakes is to provide more input containing the structure in question. We must, then, take into consideration that we don't need to change the order of presentation of language items. In fact, Krushen suggests that we present the language without any conscious effort to organize it. On the contrary, he recommends a syllabus based on topics functions and situations. The silent period. This is a receptive moment in which learners acquire some language knowledge by only listening and understanding without producing. Here, it's important not pressure students to speak. After a while, they should begin to speak making sense. When the student is ready to speak, That's when the silent period for that student will end. At this point, the student will have the confidence to participate orally in class but will still make mistakes when speaking. Conclusion It is necessary to know the theories to improve our practices. It is always important to start a meaningful interaction in the target language by means of natural communication. Comprehensible input is necessary for the acquisition of the language. Knowing aspects like the silent period give us an idea to understand the student's process of learning and motivate them. All these aspects will help us to plan our class, get the most out of the situation and do it in a natural way. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please give me a big thumbs up.